And it's, it's his usual position when it comes to the European Union. It's, it's give the EU a blank cheque and agree to anything they offer. It's, it's, not, it's not a strategy, Mr Speaker. That's surrender. But it's the same old story. The country has to wait while he plucks up the courage to take on the malcontents, the reckless, the wreckers on his own benches. But I'm here to tell him he doesn't need to worry about that because we will put country before party and ensure that Labour votes to get it through. Can I join the Prime Minister in his comments about Ukraine? I had the privilege last week of seeing firsthand the courage and resilience of the Ukrainian people, and we must continue to stand united in this House in support of Ukraine. Mr Speaker, can I also say that the thoughts of the whole House, I'm sure the whole country, will be with the family of Nicola Bully at this very, very difficult time. And can I welcome the new member for West Lancashire to her first PMQs. Mr Speaker, the Labour Party is proud to be the party of the Good Friday Agreement and peace and prosperity in Northern Ireland. We welcome attempts to make the protocol work more effectively. Does the Prime Minister agree with me that it has been poorly implemented and that the basis for any deal must be removing unnecessary checks on goods? Prime Minister. Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, let me welcome the uh, Honourable Lady to her place and associate myself with the remarks of the Honourable Gentleman uh, about Nicola Bully's family. Our thoughts are, of course, with them. Uh, as he knows, we are still in active discussions with the European Union, but he should know that I am a Conservative, a Brexiter and a Unionist, and any agreement that we reach needs to tick all three boxes. Yeah. It needs to ensure sovereignty for Northern Ireland it needs to safeguard Northern Ireland's place in our union, and it needs to find practical solutions to the problems faced by people and businesses. I will be resolute in fighting for what is best for Northern Ireland and the United Kingdom. Mr Speaker, we all agree that the protocol can be improved, but there are trade-offs, and we need to face up to them. His predecessor told businesses that there would be no forms, no checks, no barriers of any kind. That was absolute nonsense, and it destroyed trust. So, in the interests of restoring that trust, will he confirm that to avoid a hard border on the island of Ireland, the deal he's negotiating is going to see Northern Ireland continue to follow some EU law? Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I think that the Honourable Gentleman is jumping ahead. We are still... We, we are still... We are still in intensive, intensive discussions with the European Union to ensure that we can find agreement that meets the test that I set, and that is sovereignty for Northern Ireland. It is Northern Ireland's place in our precious union, and it is to find practical solutions to the problems faced by people and businesses. I have spent time engaging and listening to those communities in Northern Ireland, businesses and political parties. I have a good understanding of what is required, and I will keep fighting until we get it. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister is biting his tongue, but at some point the irreconcilables on his benches are going to twig, and they are going to come after him. The former Trade Minister says there can be no role for the European Court of Justice in Northern Ireland. So will the Prime Minister be honest with them and tell them that is not going to happen? Mr. 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 Speaker, now again, we, we need to keep going to actually secure an acceptable agreement. But for the Honourable Gentleman to be talking about a deal that he has not even seen, that we are that we're, that we are still that we are still negotiating that isn't finalized and it's it's his usual position when it comes to the european union it's it's give the eu a blank check and agree to anything they offer it's it's not it's not a strategy mr speaker that's surrender mr speaker mr speaker it is not my questions he is avoiding, it is their questions he is avoiding. His predecessors wasted months pushing the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill. 
If implemented, it would tie us up in battles with the EU, the United States and others at precisely the time we should be building common ground to boost our economy and show unity against Putin. Now, the Prime Minister clearly wants a closer relationship with the EU. So can he confirm that if there's a deal, he will pull the protocol bill? Yeah. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, look, what the, the Honourable Gentleman wants to put the EU first. I want to put Northern Ireland first. And, 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 on, and on these questions, and on these questions he, the Honourable Gentleman said he would respect the result of the referendum, and then he promised to back a second one. All the while, he was constantly voting to frustrate Brexit. And I know what the British people know, that on this question, he can't be trusted to stick up for Britain. Mr Speaker, the sound you hear is them cheering the Prime Minister, pulling the wool over their eyes. It's the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement, the 30th anniversary of the Downing Street Declaration. Tony Blair and John Major both recognised that politics in Northern Ireland is built on trust and not telling people what they want to hear, and the need to take seriously the concerns of both communities, nationalists and unionists. It's vital their voices are heard. So can the Prime Minister confirm that whatever deal he brings back, this House will get a vote on it? Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, of course, of course Parliament will express its view. But what is crucial? But what, what is crucial here? But what is crucial here is that, that this, is not, this is not about his desire to play political games in this House with this situation. This is about what is best for the people and communities of Northern Ireland. And that, Mr Speaker, is what I will keep fighting for. Well, Mr Speaker, I take it from that that this House will get a vote, and I look forward to that vote in due course. Because everyone knows the basis of this deal has been agreed for weeks. But it's the same old story. The country has to wait while he plucks up the courage to take on the malcontents, the reckless, the wreckers on his own benches. But I'm here to tell him he doesn't need to worry about that because we will put country before party and ensure that Labour votes to get it through. He should accept our offer, ignore the howls of indignation from those on his side who will never take yes for an answer. Why doesn't he just get on with it? Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, what, what I am doing is talking and listening to the people of Northern Ireland. That is the right thing to do. It is to make sure that we can respond and resolve to the concerns of the unionist communities and businesses in Northern Ireland, and that is what I will keep doing. But, Mr Speaker, we know that the Honourable Gentleman talks about his plans. We have heard that tomorrow he is going to announce five missions, but we, all, we, all, we already know what they are. It's uncontrolled immigration, it's reckless spending, it's higher debt, and it's softer sentences. And for the fifth pledge, the fifth pledge, Mr. Speaker, we all know it's that he reserves the right to change his mind on the other four.